Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here. This video is all about our green foam cases that hold our knives, both the Norseman and the Rask. Now, we used to buy these from somebody else and they were okay. We wanted a bit more control on tolerances and betterment of it, so now we're making them ourselves. I've been collecting footage for probably six months that we've been doing this, and now that we have Erin holding the camera behind you, um, she is actually getting through all that footage and showing you what we've been up to. We're using a, um, one of these Lakeshore Carbide engraving tools to cut into the foam and it's working very, very well. So yeah, they're going super well. Um, so now that we have full control over our own cases, we were getting these before, not anymore. Um, we also found a new color. So we're gonna probably go with green instead of this pink. Um, I was hoping it would be red, but it's not red, it's pink. So um, go with the green and then the knife fits super well. And up till now, we've been going We've been just putting our stuff on top and I've never been happy with it because sometimes it'll get pinched in the in the edge there and you know it's not a super great presentation so when you open it you have to move these before you can even see the prized possession the knife so we're trying to figure out ways you know tape it to the top tape it to the bottom all different possibilities and then eventually Eric had an excellent idea I want to share with you guys. And Eric's like, why don't we just put a little cutout here with an engraving lift here so that now we can put all the cool stuff underneath and you can even, you know, when we ship it, we'll probably move it like that so you can see something underneath, more visual cues, and then you can be like, oh, lift here. Who's not going to do that? So that works really well. We actually lost a lot of suction. Like without this thing, it suctions in there very, very, very well. And that's really hard to get out actually, but I think this will work really great. And then the new cases are gonna have an egg, uh, egg carton foam taped to the lid. So it's gonna pad and protect the top of the knife. Bit by bit, we're getting cool stickers made up here. Everything's coming together. got an egg crate foam custom made for the lid which I think let's use this one because it's chamfered I think it's gonna cup the knife perfectly because they used to rattle just a little bit if you go like this I didn't like that Eric hated that um, so this custom egg crate foam that we had cut uh, should just give it just that much careful padding to make it work nicely I love it so after looking long and hard, we got this foam from foamfittools.com. Really happy with their service. Um, shipping to Canada was kind of expensive, but that's Canada for you. So we weren't quite super happy with the red that we got before. So we asked Pete at Foam Fit Tools if he had any other colors, and he told me he had green. So I am super happy with this green color. It's like a solid lime green. Cannot wait to cut this up and uh, try them out right now. I think that's gonna be a solid color for us. The red's too pink. Um, and also, I was getting some burrs around the corners with the tool I was using before. So Datron saw that and sent us this awesome end mill that they made specifically for foam. It's got polished flutes, three fluter. It's a metric, what is it, three millimeter, I think. So just under one eighth of an inch. Nice long reach. Um, that's gonna work very well for us green ones turned out fantastic. I love the green. Having a bit of a problem with that new end mill, same problem I was having before with the old end mill, is that, especially when doing this cutout, this operation, 
um, these long chips come out and then right at the end the end mill comes up and it starts wrapping this and it wraps it right around the tool like crazy and then it fans around and it goes in see how this edge is radiused all the way around not good in a perfect world if it looked consistent and perfect all the time it might be cool but it's not see it did it a little bit right here um, so that's because these stringers are going around the tool and it's getting dragged around there so we had I think four good ones and two with this problem this one had it right on the end there and that's not acceptable so I think I think this is the problem and I need to go in, instead of doing a straight toolpath like that, I need to do either an adaptive toolpath or just a parallel angled lines or something just to make these smaller. And then I, I think that'll work. Make chips, not long strings. Check out this idea. So if we finish the outside of the pocket first, which is counterintuitive to machining thinking, um, and then clear out the inside, Normally with metal, you would clear out the inside and then finish the outside. I'm going to do it backwards. So I like to hide the model. Sometimes I'll put the stock as transparent or not. Let's do not. First one, if we hide the tool path. Finish the pocket first, and then it's going to come in. And do, it's, this is a 3D parallel tool path with a 45 degree thing. And this is going to make nice short chips, not these long stringers. And look at that, I can tell that it has cleared out the entire thing, nothing left over. That's going to work awesome. Here's a quick side-by-side -side of the red slash pink versus the green. Now let's take a quick look at edge quality. This is with that Lakeshore Carbide 3 Flute gold coated end mill. Just a bit frayed, a bit burry, uh, pretty crisp. The Datron end mill leaves a way crisper edge. Utterly fantastic quality. And once you see them side-by-side, -side, you really tell the difference. This is actually the first moment I've had to have them side by side. Definitely worth it. Definitely cool. Also, um, notice how the O on Grimsmo looks a little bit different than the rest. Um, and this is a good one. We were having some problems where the O would kind of tear away because the, the outside is so thin, right? Um, so we took out, it's got an outside circle and an inside circle. We took out the inside one for a few of them. Didn't really love it because um, it was doing the, let me think, it was doing the outside first, and then it was cutting the inside circle. And there just wasn't enough meat left over. So Eric had the great idea to reverse the direction to do the, the inside first, and then do the outside. And that totally fixed it. So it's just a process change that now makes the little tiny detail that much better. So we make them six at a time in the sheet. And... Uh, next step is to break them off. They're all going to have flappy things because since it's being vacuumed down, you can actually see the grid pattern. Um, you can't break through or else you lose vacuum and the whole thing flies off. So we left 50 thou on the bottom and then now we have to go over to the little grinder and Barry's going to show us how he does that. is to get rid of that burr. The other half, see yeah, how we have a pretty large chamfer on here. It's because the inside of the case is actually radius. So we found that without a big chamfer, the case is uh, not sitting flat and it's actually like like compressing in the middle and the, it's, it's just not great. Now I can't get this one out because it doesn't have my little lift here thing. 
They're so suctioned in there. There we go. So, um, yeah, so we need a pretty large chamfer. And I mean, I'll admit the quality of the, uh, you know, sanding, it's very hand done. It's very quick and dirty. I don't, I don't mind. I don't care really. Maybe we'll, we'll tighten it up as we go along. So it's been a few weeks since the last time I filmed about these cases. Um, made a bunch of tiny little tweaks and they're getting better and better. Turn the vacuum off now. This one's done. Turn the machine off. Um, super duper fantastically happy with how these are turning out. Um, changing the way the toolpath goes, changing the way the engraving. I think I already talked about that. Uh, little things like raising up the floor for the Torx wrench right here because the body touches but then the shaft was too loose so then it would tip down. But now I raised up the floor there so that it sits perfectly flush. Um, change the toolpath strategy for in here to make the chips nice and small because those long stringy chips were wrapping around the tool and were causing rubbing and burning problems around here. So optimize the toolpath. Um, all kinds of little things. Even made the finger hole a little bit bigger. Having full control is absolutely fantastic. It's kind of funny, it actually suctions the grid pattern into the bottom, but after like 20 minutes, it pops back up. It's no big deal at all. Um, yeah, so just today I've made that and all of these, and yesterday I made about the same amount. So when you break it out, it's got this, this burr right here. Right, that's not cool and it also doesn't fit into the case that way. So we used to have Barry do the sanding on the sandpaper, and then uh, I kind of had a genius idea. He is a woodworker by trade, so he used his router table with a corner rounding bit to come in and corner round the bottom. And, you know, admittedly, he says it's tricky to get it perfect every time, I'm willing to accept that for now, and we'll get better and better over time. Um, but yeah, he said he played around and, and messed with the the fence and the way that he holds it, and and uh, is getting a very fantastic corner round on the bottom there. So I'm really happy with that. So that is awesome, and oh, I'm just so happy with how these are turning out. And now the only only things that bug me are these little flappies which we usually pick away if we, if we remember. Where Barry was sanding the corners with the belt sander, it works okay, but it's a little very inconsistent in how it works. So he has a table router, I guess it's called, with a corner rounding bit or a round over bit, um, where he can set this on the table and do the rounding. And it's got like one of those bearings on the top that kind of rolls around and follows it. And that's how we're doing it now. And they look awesome. I've been filming this video about the foam for the past two months or so. So final thoughts, I think I can wrap up the video now. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I don't think there's too much more to add. Um, I've made dozens of changes, dozens of tweaks. The new Datron end mill that I'm pretty sure I showed um, is utterly fantastic. It does exactly what I need it to do. And uh, the Lakeshore engraving end mill is just toit, just perfect. And Everything about cutting foam is backwards than what you think it's gonna be. It's backwards than cutting metal. Like, to rough out this pocket, with cutting metal, you would rough out the pocket first and then do a finish pass around the outside. With foam, completely backwards. I found it's best to do the finish pass first, plunge in, rotate around, do the finish pass, and then hog out the material on the inside, and that works phenomenally. Totally backwards thinking. The other trick, which my friend Brad Souther told me, and yes, Brad, I'm sharing your secret, is with milling, you have the choice to do conventional milling or climb milling. Now with metal, I use climb milling for everything. Not even a question, has to be climb milling. With foam, you want the opposite. You want conventional milling. So inside of a hole, you want to go clockwise, and outside of a, of a diameter, like on the outside of this, you want to go counterclockwise, which is backwards than metal. You want to go conventional. Um, and that works just great with foam because it, for some reason, foam does not cut in the climb milling. It just doesn't. It just rubs and moves out of the way. So, those are my final thoughts with the foam. Uh, and again, I got it from foamfittools.com from Pete. Uh, super happy, 
super great result. I did have one or two sheets that delaminated a little bit, um, but I fed back the details to him and he sent me another sheet replacement for free and uh, he's fixing the problem. So it's, you know, good feedback back and forth. Um, very, very happy with the tools. Super happy with this. Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. I know this is a very broad spectrum kind of, you could use this for anything. And now that we make our own, we want to start using it for everything too. We want to make, you know, phone cases for upcoming projects like pens and flashlights. We, for all I know, we're going to need a dedicated machine just to cut foam. Thanks for watching you guys. We're absolutely loving these foams. Um, I know you guys are too, the customers that are getting these knives. As you can see in the video, we started with the blue ones and then we went to the red ones, the pink ones, and then settled on the green. Super duper happy. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, like this video, subscribe, and lots more coming up. Thanks.